Welcome to Performance. In this video, we're going to take you on a tour of the administrator role. Let's begin by looking at the dashboard. Here you can see an overview of all of your performance reviews. Under recent reviews, you can see reviews that have already started and under upcoming reviews, you can see when future reviews are due and even start them. Now let's look at account settings. First, you can choose the performance review frequency. This will be the default for all your reviews. You can change this on an individual basis by going to scheduling. Next, you can enable self reviews. A self review is initiated by a manager for their employee and allows the employee to do the whole review by themselves. Once they are done, it is submitted to their manager for their manager's comments. The performance review score is the mandatory rating at the end of every review. You can choose if the rating is out of 5, 10, or 100. Email reminders can be set for your performance reviews. You can choose who gets reminders for upcoming reviews along with how many days in advance. You can also choose who to notify when they become overdue and after how many days it is overdue. You can also set email reminders for goals. You can choose who to notify when a goal is coming up and how many days, as well as who to notify when a goal is updated and if they should only be notified when the goal is complete. Next, we'll look at 360 degree feedback. You can choose which roles can submit feedback and who they can submit feedback for. Employees can submit feedback for themselves, peers, which are those in their department, or their manager. Managers can submit feedback for themselves, their peers, employees they manage, and their manager. You can choose to allow anonymous feedback. This means that someone can submit feedback without being known. Although the person receiving the feedback won't know who submitted it, the administrator can reveal the identity of the person who sent it. Lastly, you can create the questions the user has to answer when submitting the different kinds of feedback. Now, let's look at creating templates for your performance reviews. First, you can create different competencies you want to go over in a review. Then, you can create questions within each competency. When creating questions, you can choose different ways to answer. First is a text box where an answer can be typed. Next is a drop down menu with customizable answers. You can include up to 10 possible answers. The radio group is a multiple choice question where the user can choose only one answer. Checkboxes is for a multiple choice question and more than one answer can be selected. Rating is a one to five star scale. Comment is a text box that refers to the previous question. For example, if you want them to explain their answer, you can use a comment. File uploads allows a file to be uploaded as an answer to the question. .txt, .xls, .ppt, .pdf, or .doc formats are allowed. Finally, yes or no, where they can choose either yes or no as options. You can select if the question is mandatory, so they cannot progress through the review unless they answer that question. Next, we'll create review templates. You can create as many templates as you want and create them for different departments, roles, or whatever you want to do. When creating a template, 
you can choose what you want to review. You can choose goals, feedback, attendance, which shows a total of time off taken as well as each request, skills and notes, which are from the staff module, and warnings if you use the warnings module. You can also choose if a signature is required for this template. Once you've made those choices, you are ready to add questions. Click Add Question at the right side. Choose a competency, and then choose one of the questions from the competency. Repeat this until you've finished creating your template. If you have several reviews that are similar, you can click the duplicate button to the right of the review you want to duplicate, give it a new name, and then make the changes you wish to it. Lastly, we'll create a performance review. Under the main menu section of the navigation menu, click on performance reviews, then click on create review. Select the employee name. If this review is a self-review, the due date, the date range, which will determine the information you see in the review. If you set the date range for the last year, then goals that were started, skills that have changed, notes that have been entered, feedback given, all time off taken, and any warnings received during that last year will be shown. Choose the template you want to use, then click Start Review. The review starts with a brief introduction showing the due date. Be sure to click Save and Continue after reviewing each section. Next will be Goals. You can see the name and description of all goals during the review period and if they have been completed. In each of these sections, the manager will have a chance to add their own comments. Under Skills, you'll be able to see if an employee's proficiency at a skill has changed. Under Feedback, any feedback that has been submitted that the employee is able to see will be shown here. If any notes have been entered on the employee's profile during the review period in staff that they are allowed to see, they will be shown here. In the attendance section, you will see all the time off they took during the review period. You'll find a total for each type and every request. You'll only see this if you use the time off module. If you use the warnings module, you'll see any warnings the employee has received during the review period. Next is the questionnaire where you can go through and answer the questions in the template. At the conclusion of the review, the manager can add their final comments and rate the employee based on the scale selected in the account settings. Then they can select the next review date. Once this has been done, click on finalize to finish the review. If the template requires that the employee sign the review, they'll be able to log into their account and sign it at this point. If you have any questions, feel free to email our customer success team at support at purelyhr.com. Want to start a free 21 day trial? Go to purelyhr.com to get started. Also, click the subscribe button and the bell icon below to be notified of all of our future how to videos. Thanks for watching and enjoy Purely HR.